Hi, I'm Cindy. And I'm Zoe. And we are about to do a lesson for younger kids on drawing Serena Malfi as Angelina in La Cenerentola. Um, it's a free lesson for kids all over the earth. I hope millions of kids see it and love it. Um, this can be done by little kids, big kids. If your little kid's drawing, you may want to have your mom, your babysitter, your dad, somebody else may want to draw too. That doesn't mean grown-ups that you're going to be drawing on your child's paper. That means you're going to have your own paper, just like Zoe, who's going to be teaching, and me, I have my own paper because I'm the student. I'm going to be you, which reminds me that I want to tell you that the reason, one of the reasons we're doing this, because everybody has, everybody's having an artless life over here um, during our worldwide quarantine, is that some of the people who are also in quarantine and not having their regular art lessons are our kids at the Time and Children's Arts Initiative. And so we really wanted to make sure that we created some curriculum for them to be able to have something to do while they're waiting for us to come onto their remote classrooms. So if you love these lessons, please think about making a very small donation, a tiny donation for every lesson you do um, to Time In. It's timeinkids.org backslash donate. And that would be really fantastic because that will help serve the hundreds of kids who we work with every week in Harlem. Okay, so we're off. On your mark, get set, go. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a medium sized circle towards the top of the page. You want it to be close to the top, but not so close that there's no room for hair. So make sure you leave some room for hair and then a lot of room underneath for the body, but don't make it too small. Otherwise it'll be harder to draw. So the important thing is that this circle that Zoe just drew is the skull. It's these bones here to this top of the head. It's not the face. So sometimes people get confused. So now I'm going to do it too. And the thing that I'm going to suggest to you is that maybe you're going to turn your paper, as you can see me turning my book, makes it easier to draw the circle. Don't make your circle too small because since I just showed you that it's the skull, it means your eyes are going to have to go in there. Anyway, here's my circle. Not as good as Zoe's, but okay. No, it's just as good. It's a little. So, that's just good. so the next step is you're going to draw a horizontal line two thirds of the way down the circle. So if the half is here, it's going to be a little lower here. I have a good trick that I do, which is I mark on two sides here. Zoe will hold it up and then I can't see. So I'm going to come around just this look side. look at the video. Here, look at the screen. You can see by looking at the no, screen. No, but I can't. I got to see my paper. Sorry. Um, here. So like that, I mark it on two sides Wait. and then I connect my two lines. See? makes it easier for me. Because sometimes for beginner artists, of which I am always a beginner artist, it's harder to eyeball things, right? As you get better, you'll eyeball better. Oops, sorry, but mine is, high, the, yeah. mine is the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So is a little too high. It's too high and too crooked, so I'm gonna redo it. One little dash, two little dashes, and here I go. So for anyone who's ready for the next step, you can draw a straight line through the middle of the circle vertically down. And you can make it go all the way down to the bottom of your page. And you can do the same thing. You can mark, again, it's just easier, mark again your two little places and then just draw your line. And look how light my line is because these are guidelines and guidelines will be erased in the end. These are just to tell us where things fall. So now you're gonna make, a guideline for your left eye. You're going to split the left side of your circle in half and draw a straight vertical line through there. Same thing. See, so that's going to be where your eye is going to be. You'll see. And then you're going to do the same thing for the right side of your circle, like so. And that's your right eye line. Oops. Mine is very wavy. That's okay. So. I will erase a little bit so that it's not so weird, um, right? So eye lines, the center line is your nose, the eye lines are your eyes, right? Our faces are essentially symmetrical, right? More or less. One eye, one eye, but they're not identical. That's true. Okay, so now you're gonna draw a straight horizontal line that touches the bottom of your circle. So I find the easiest way to do that is 
to start right at the bottom of the circle and draw your line there like that and then extend it out. Just remember, if anything's going too fast for you, you can just pause and we'll still be here when you unpause. So now we're gonna measure this distance that I've just marked with arrows to find the length of the jaw. So this top line over here is the line where your eyebrows are. And this line right here is the line where your nose is, so like this. And we're going to find the line where your chin is by measuring these two and bringing them down. So you can measure on your own face like this. And that's what we're gonna do right here. So I'm gonna do this upside down so you can see it more easily. I'm measuring, I'm measuring. Freeze your fingers. And then I'm putting my thumb at the, or you know, your pointer finger, whatever finger you're using at the bottom line. I'm gonna make a little mark there. So. Like this. So I measure here. Right, I measure here. They can't see that. I measure up. here like this, Hold right? Up. Hold this straight up. And then I'm gonna slide my fingers right down here. like they, that. They, they, and I'm gonna, I use, this is my little trick. I just see. use my finger nail to make a little mark, make a little mark. And then I'm gonna draw that line across. Oops, see there's my fingernails in a slightly different place. Oops, that's a little too low. I'm gonna measure it. So if I wanna check what I've done to make sure it's right, I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna measure and I'm going to say, oops, a little bit too big. So here I go again, da 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 da. It's here, right? I'm gonna go on this line, which is the right, the correct space. I can always go back and check. I'm gonna erase the wrong line. Here I go. And now once again, I'm gonna check you can always go back and check your space. There we go, now I'm good, right? And now we're gonna draw a line through that point like this. A line through that point. You already did that. You oh, I did it, ahead. yes, I did it. Oh, I'm fast. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're gonna draw the side of the face. So we're gonna start with just this side of the face. So in between this top line and the second line, the horizontal lines, you're gonna draw a, a, curved, a little slightly curved in line that touches the head circle where it meets the top line and then goes down to the second line. And here. just so we know, because sometimes videos reverse, this is on the left side well, you know, of the it, head. It doesn't matter if it's the left side or the right side, it's just so long as it's all on one side. Okay. So, yeah. All right. So well, you can be facing either way. I'm gonna matter. do it on the left side. Mm -hmm kind of curved. Mm -hmm. Now, can you explain what this is on the face? Can you this show us? This is the side of your face, right here. Okay. And now we're gonna do the side of the jaw, right here. So, she's turned a little bit to the side. So we're gonna draw a diagonal line in that goes down, touches this bottom line and goes, comes a little bit past this, this first vertical line. It's gonna just come to right there. Okay, here I go. Wait, don't draw yet because I have to look at you. And it's going to be so it's so no, light. No, 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 it doesn't go underneath. It comes to here. Let's ah, see. okay. See, it, it has goes, to touch this bottom line. Touches the bottom line, but it doesn't. Okay, there so it touches the bottom line, but it doesn't go beyond the bottom line. It goes beyond the first vertical line. So for those of you who might be don't know what horizontal and vertical are. Horizontal is like this, vertical is like this. Right? Horizontal, so, vertical. Right. Then, from there, you're gonna draw the side of the jaw. So she's turned like this, so we drew that, we drew this, and now we're gonna draw this. So from there, you're gonna come up from this point, and you're gonna meet with this point right here, the second horizontal line and the last vertical line. There to there. Okay, and it's gonna be slightly curved. So let's see if I get that right. So I'm only coming, I'm not joining so back to the first, circle. So nope, you're coming back to there. I'm coming right. back to this little place you right see here. That here, I'm gonna show it to you. I made a little X there, right? Yep. You can see start that? by finding that point. I recommend starting by finding the place where you're drawing to, 
and then drawing to there or drawing back from there. Okay, can we just look at the picture again? Can you show us the picture again so we have an idea of what we've drawn? So here Please we've drawn that. This is the original. I know, we have drawn that and mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's correct. Okay, now we're going to draw the ear. This is coming to you direct from our kitchen. Yep. Our, Where else would we be? And then we're always going to Kitchen and quarantine. Kitchen and quarantine. Okay. Okay. So now you're going to draw the ear right there where the jaw ends, touching this back line on the inside of the head. And if you're wondering, the, your ears really do start from your start from your eyebrows and go down to your nose. And you can measure on your own heads with your fingers, and you'll see it's true. So um, I have a question for you. So mm -hmm. my box is a little smaller than That's your okay. box. It so can go outside of the my circle. ear can go outside that. So it's, it's in right. the the ear is going to go into this last box, and it's like a backward C, right? So here I go. I'm putting my backward C in, and there it is. See, my backward C is in, and here, just for your own edification, if you want to know how big your ears are in the box, all you have to do is take your finger, put it on top of your ear, and see where it goes to, and then mine is very big. Mine goes, it's like, I can hear very well. Maybe that's why I'm so musical. Anyway. Okay, so now we're going to draw a little squiggle on the inside of the ear like this. And as I said in our other video, Hendo Park, who's an amazing artist and was Zoe's original teacher, uses a little backwards nine there. So for variation, I'm using my backwards nine or G. So we're gonna draw a very tiny nose now. And it's going to be almost impossible to see. So I'm going to make it dark. We're going to draw a little dot right here where this second horizontal line meets this first vertical line. And just a little tiny dot going upwards like that. that so helpful. here's something I'm going to do to help you. I always think of I put numbers on top of my line. So I have line one, line two, line three, and line one, line two, line three. That way we know exactly which lines we're talking about. Cause some of us- I'm gonna number mine as well. Some of us get so, confused. We're line, we're, we're vertical line one meets horizontal line two. And then what- The number's of course all backwards cause the video's backwards, but- But it's okay, yeah. you get the idea. Yeah. Right, I so mean, you see where it is. Everything's flipped, so. So it's a little tiny, Dash slightly going, diagonal dash going very up. Tiny, tiny 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 going up can you see mine is so tiny can you really see it there it is it's hard to see wait that's not right yeah stop hitting the erasers away from me <laughs> stop stealing my erasers okay so um because her face is slightly to the side her eyebrows are going to be in slightly different places than they usually are so the first eyebrow is going to go up. It's going to start very close to the side of the head. It's going to be above this top horizontal line and it's going to go up to line one, vertical line one, like that. So it's starting a little bit above horizontal line one and it's going up to line one. A, maybe going a little too straight up. Too straight up? Maybe okay. a little too straight up. All right, up. too straight up. A little bit less straight up. Okay, one that way, and then it goes down on the line like that. There you go, yeah. Let's see, here we go, how's that? Does yours look like that? That's pretty good, right? Okay. So now we're gonna draw the second eyebrow, which is, you're gonna start at this second line. It's going to start just a little bit before it and it's going to go up and then down towards the ear. But it's not going to touch this last line all the way. It's going to line be three. Straight. So it's going to start at, just it's going to start just over line two. Starts over line two. Mm -hmm. It goes up and then it comes down and doesn't touch line three. Oops. I got to borrow the eraser. So. For those of you who have not, you know, who are really loving this and want to be doing this every day for the rest of your life, we recommend that you get 
some simple, some simple equipment. I will. Some simple equipment like this is a really cool thing for when you have to erase a tiny line. And you can get something like this. You probably can find it on Amazon also, but you can definitely find stuff like this at a company called Jet Pens. There's all kinds of very good manga supplies. Now, you really don't need a lot, like a pencil and a pencil and some and a pencil and an eraser and a sharpener and um and a box for your sharpenings because when your pencil gets dull use the sharpener this one's okay easier to hang use. on one second all right it works a little better okay so while my mom is sharpening her pencil i'm going to show you the next step so we're going to draw two circles for the eyes they're going to be the same size they're both going to touch this <clears> top line one of them is going to be touching the top one the one that's touching the side of the face is going to touch the side of the face this line one and the top line this one over here it's going to be touching the top line and it's going to, and line two is going to cut right through the middle of it. And they're both going to be the same length. So this one right over the line, this one in between the line and the face. Now, when you say the same length, do you mean they're going to be? Yeah, the bottom should the be the bottom same. is going to be in the same place. All right. So here we go. I'm being, I'm you, I'm the mm -hmm. student. So my first one is filling almost the whole box. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go all the way down to the nose, though. Make sure it stays above the nose. Yours is too Mine's low. Mine's a little too big? Yeah, make sure it stays above the nose. All right. Your eyes can't go lower than your nose. Okay. Too bad, because I was really liking the shape of that eye. But here I go. I'm going to make it a little smaller. Okay. And okay. so there's that eye, right? I put that yeah. eye into that box. You see it touches the top, but it doesn't touch the bottom. And then the next one goes right on line two. And again, this is because her head is turned, so it's going to be centered over that, and it's going to be at the same place at the bottom. Hmm. And it should be as big, I suppose, right? Or is it bigger? No, they're the same size. Okay, but the bottom... This one's too big, though. This one's much bigger than that one. I know. Well, I'm going to make... They need to be the same size. I like my... That's what I said. So I, I like my first eye better, so I'm going to make this one bigger. Okay. So... Um, you guys keep drawing while I fix my eye because so, my eye is too small. The next step is there's going to be a curved line coming off the top of each one. This is like an upper eyelid slash eyelash situation. Curved line coming off the top of each one coming out to either side. Okay. That's okay. much better. Okay. Ah, you see? There. I caught up. Now I have to so do the next thing. The eyelash. The, the upper eyelash. eyelid slash eyelash. Wait. Mm -hmm. Like that? Exactly. Okay. There's mine. And then you're going to draw some curved eyelashes on the bottom. And if you're wondering how many, it's really up to you. You can draw as few or as many as you want. Whatever you like. And they even go a little bit off the side of the head, too. Yeah, they sure cool. do. And are they a little curved yeah, all the way? Yeah, they're a little curved. But if you, like, if you prefer straight eyelashes, you can make them straight. Don't make them going past the nose. Oops. Don't make them going past the nose. Yeah, make sure they stay Make sure they stay on this side. Ow, 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 ow. Make sure they stay on this side of the nose and don't go over this way. Okay, wait. I'm catching up. Catching up, catching mm -hmm. up. Now, okay. there's mine. And there you go, see? Now we're going to draw a cross shape in each eye. This is a guideline for the stars. So this one already has a, has a vertical line going through it. So you don't need to add one, but this one you do. So draw a horizontal line through the middle of each one. And then for this one, draw a vertical line as well. Right through the middle of the eye. That's easy. And then... We're gonna use that as a guideline to draw a star shape like this. So you're gonna draw a star shape around it. So you're just gonna draw L's around it. So all that means is, I'm gonna show you, it's really simple. Uh, if you can see exactly, it's like a little L. Do -do 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 -do. Right around the cross that you're gonna draw. Right. And you just don't L's. touch the cross. Two. It's like a backwards L, a forwards L, an upside down backwards L, and an upside down forwards L. What it looks like is... A couple of L's. What it looks like is that, right? Yeah. 
and you know like Might more L like mine is a little really J like what, what but you're drawing is kind of this shape like this you're drawing a star like this and then you're gonna color in the top two boxes on nice. each eye. I might want to pause so, there. So you're going to color in the top boxes on each, the top two boxes on each eye. Right here and here. Here and here. Like, you know what? Take a look for a minute just so you can see what it looks like on the drawing. Look. Mm -hmm. See how those eyes are? Okay. And then you can add a couple more eyelashes if you like underneath the top eyelash like this. So, I so the add... top one is the long one and then the other ones are a little shorter. So if I added two more here Cute. and two more here. Okay, Ooh. I did mine too. Very good. Mine won't be as good as Zoe's, but we try. So right underneath the nose. You're gonna draw a little smile shape. It starts at this line too, right here, right underneath the nose, and it goes all the way to where this eye starts. So you can measure that down and see where that is. Right underneath okay, the nose. Okay, so I'm gonna start at line one, right mm -hmm. under the nose. Right under the nose. And, and I'm gonna come to the beginning. And I'm gonna come of the second eye. To the beginning of the second eye. Very good. And make sure it's straight. Just keep it just straight. Just straight? Yeah, it's a little smile, but it doesn't dip down. It just stays straight. Okay. Here, does that make sense to you like that? There's my little version. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you're going to draw right underneath it, touching it, um, a little U shape because her mouth is open. Okay, so a little U shape. Not too big, right? Not too big. And it's just a little U. Okay. Okay. How's that one? Is that good? Mine doesn't look so good. Yours looks great. You think so? Yeah. Here, what do you think? That looks great. All right. So now we're going to measure. I'm going to put two stars where we're going to measure. We're going to measure from the top of the head to the chin. Like this. It's going to look silly for now. I'm going to measure from the top of the head to the chin. Like this. With our fingers. And That's we're going to bring it down to the chin and we're going to make a mark right here. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. Like this. So from here to here is the same as from here to here. Mine is actually a little low. But so this is. The, is keep the erasers in the middle so I can get Sorry. Them. Because um, in drawing, when we talk about what's called proportion, we measure things in heads. It makes so, it easier because everyone's right. got a head. So like for instance, no headless people walking around. This is a kind of chibi drawing, right? So let's look and see. Here's one head, three heads, all two head, three. three heads. Mm -hmm. Chibis are three heads. Little kids in regular drawing are five heads and grown ups are typically seven heads. No okay. one is really three heads. No, but right. There are no people fine. this shrunken up, but that's called a chibi. What does a chibi mean in Japanese? It means little. A little thing. Okay, so wait a minute. I have to do I have to do what Zoe did, and what you are doing is I'm measuring the head. You can't see it that angle yet. I'm measuring the head. Here I go. Ooh. I'm measuring the head. Can you see me? Yes. Measuring. And now I'm freezing my fingers. I'm taking it down, and I'm putting my line. I, I might mark my so, little thing. So the next thing you have to do is you have to measure the, the head again. Go back to the top head, and you're going to bring it straight to that mark you made, and you can make another mark right here. So don't – a lot of times people will um, put their fingers – a lot of times people will do this. What I'm about to do, do not do. People will like measure the head and then they'll go back to the first head and then they'll measure the third head. Like they'll go like this and then this and then this. Don't do that because then your fingers will change size. Just go to the first head, freeze your fingers, bring it down to the mark you made and then make another mark like that. And also sometimes like you can use like a, like a pencil to help you measure. Like you can um, use your pencil, put it on top of the head. Put your finger where the mark is. Oh, I think that one's too big. That's definitely too big. That's way too big. Hold on. Let's see. Ooh, this one's high. And that one's low. This is like that. This is like that. 
There you go. And you, don't, and you don't need to make lines all the way across. Just make little marks like this. Just make little marks that cross the middle line like this. All right. So if you're a grown up drawing with a kid, check the size of the, check the size. And how do you do that? You go back in the opposite direction, right? No, 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 yes. you, you measure the head. You go back to the head. No, you measure the head. Yeah, there you go. And you check it again, there you go. Well, your, your fingernails are making it long. Okay. She has long fingernails. It's changing I have long life. fingernails, changing the size of my head. I have no so fingernails. So here I there go, you go. head, See? head. Okay, uh -huh. so, yes, all right, good. Now I have my size. I have no fingernails. Nothing again the way here. Okay. And if so, you're a kid, you probably have no fingernails. Too. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to draw a little tiny neck. There are no real proportions for this because it's ridiculously small. So it's going to be, the first line is going to be right around, right, really right in front of this second line here. And then the other line is going to be in between the second line and the third line. It's going to go slightly diagonally this way, and it's going to come a little bit farther down than this bottom chin line. Like this. There you go. Yep. Wow. It's the skinniest neck in the world. Look at that. It's tiny. Very small. So now we're going to draw two shoulders. One sh very small. <laughs> so one so shoulder windy. is going to be right underneath this chin line, and it's going to be right on top of the ear line. Okay, so like I have that. a question for you before we even um, do that. Why are you making little circles for the shoulders? Because they're your shoulder blades. So they're your shoulder joints, mean? actually, right? So your yeah, shoulder joint, joints. if you put your hand on your shoulder, you really will see. Circle, it is, actually. It's, it's, it's a, a round thing that a bone fits in, so... That's what all of it's your joints, like a, all of your joints are going to be your actual drawn shoulder is a circle. more like um, a hinge. Okay. But it's easier to draw a circle because it looks round from the outside anyway. And it's, the shoulder is very complicated. You can feel it. It's, it's easier round. to draw a circle because it looks round. It looks like you could easily put a circle in there anyway. You don't need to, like if you had to draw every bone you actually had to do a drawing, you'd have a really ridiculous looking drawing. Like imagine if you had to draw the whole skull to draw a face. Now It'd be why, very weird. why is the under her chin? I didn't explain this one yet. So then the other circle. So the other circle, so because she's turned, you can't see her whole shoulder. So the other circle is under, right at her chin, in between these two lines, cut off by her chin, because she's turned. And Can you just show up. it to us in the drawing? Of course, she has puffy sleeves in the drawing, but. That's what her shoulders are like. Okay. So now. Can you give us the hair? Okay, yeah. Let's do the hair do so the that hair we next. can get her face fixed up before we get to her body. So now we're going to start with a guideline. You're going to start from her ear right here, and you're going to draw a curved line that comes all the way around above her eyebrows and over the side of the face like this, and draw it lightly. Is this one good? Like that? It comes down a little too far. Oh, uh, I see. Too, right. Okay. Maybe a little straighter. Mm -hmm. Wait. I have to erase. Okay. And right. then for anyone who's ready for the next step, you can draw a curved line coming from line two over the top of the head to this hair curve, right? Like this. And that's the side of her bangs. Can I see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now she looks like Astro Girl. And then, for anyone who's ready, you're going to draw a curved line going around the back of her head this way, all the way down to her neck, and it can curl up a little here and then touch her neck. So it's like a little S at the bottom by her neck, right? Sort of, yeah. A little scoop -o. Scoop, yeah, it's a curl. Okay, I think I did mine. Here's mine. So now we're going to draw her two buns. 
So you're gonna draw a semicircle on either side of the head. One's gonna start on this side of line one, one's gonna start on this side of line three, like that. And they're pretty big, mm -hmm. right? They're pretty big, yeah. But they're cut off by her hair. So one here and one here. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. And you're gonna draw a little semicircle inside each one so they kind of look like donuts. And this is gonna be the center of her bow. Her, she has ribbons on either side, and this is the center part of the ribbon. Make sure oh, it doesn't go Oh, it's a semicircle. Yeah, okay. semicircle, exactly. Oops. And Another then, mistake. Okay. And then, That's why you need an eraser. And then, from each one of those, you're going to draw two curves coming out. And that will make the bow. And you're going to touch the sides of the circles, sides of the semicircles, like this. Okay. So those are also kind of semicircles, semicircles, right? Yep. And they fit inside. Mm -hmm. And then inside each one of those, you can draw a little semicircle. So it's just a lot of semicircles. Let's like see that. Inside of each of those, a little tiny semicircle. Mm -hmm. That's where the bow kind of. That's um, the fold of the bow. The fold of the bow. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's teeny tiny. Are you really good at drawing teeny mm -hmm. tiny things? Look at that. Yeah. Teeny tiny. Okay, so now in between her eyebrows, we're going to draw two curved lines for her bangs. This is going to be the beginning of her line. So the one on this side goes this way, the one on this side curves this way. And they're going to touch this bangs line. So now we're drawing in between line one and line two. Okay, can you show us the drawing again so we can look at what we're kind of working on? It's the, right, it's this, this part, part yeah. here. Okay. And then... I'm going to draw another curved line on this side of this curved line. So curve this direction. Okay. No, no, the wrong side. That's the other side. The other side. Oh, sorry. And it has to touch this bottom line. Okay. Everything should touch the Everything bottom should line. touch the line. Yep. And make sure we're staying on just this side for now. So now we're going on the left side. Or whatever okay. side this is on your paper. So um, then you're going to draw one more on this side. Okay. So make it a little bit more spaced out. Okay. That's all right. That's okay. And then one last one. And if you still have a lot of room left over, you can add more. If you don't, if you don't have enough room, you can have less. Whatever works for you. But you just don't want too many. Make sure they're all curved in that direction. So then you're going to draw a curve. We're going to start on the other side. Draw, add one curve here like this. Make sure they all touch this bottom line. Okay. And then one more curve on that side. And that should, that'll probably be it for this side. So then you're going to draw a curve at the bottom of each one of these. Like this. So you're just going to, at the bottom of each one, just draw a curved line. Like a scallopy shape almost. So basically we're done with the hair now. That's pretty much it. And we're gonna get back to the body. So we're not gonna do the doubles for this? No, let's leave it at that. It looks cute. Okay. So now we're gonna split in half. In between the shoulders and this first head, I'm gonna draw a halfway mark right here. Draw it really lightly. And you want to, I made it a little bit longer than my, um, than this mark. I made it a little longer because that makes it easier to see. Easier to tell the difference. There you are. See my light line? It's very light. So inside the shoulder circle, just on this side, a curved line coming down to this new divided line. And that's the side of the body. So it's right against the shoulder circle, but it stays inside line one and comes down to this new halfway line that we just drew. Okay. Well, I think I got it. Is that good? Mine's maybe too curved. No, it's fine. Very good. All right. Here's, here's mine. And then we're going to draw her back, which is going to be on the other side of the shoulder circle, curved in a little tiny bit down to this first line as well. So they kind of rhyme. Oh, it's a little straighter, right? Maybe a little, a little straighter. straighter. A little straighter. Okay, wait. So it starts on the outside. Mm -hmm. So it basically, bottom. it's basically on top of line three. Okay. Got it. Cute. Small body. Ooh, chibi. 
So now we're gonna draw the circles, the shoulders. So you're gonna connect the top of the shoulder circle to the neck. It's basically gonna be on this line three. And if you can see your shoulder at all, you just connect it to the neck here. Okay, that so I've got that. one that connects to the neck from the top of the shoulder circle, right? And mm -hmm. then on the other side... If you can see it. If you can even see it. If you can't see it, it's fine. If you can see it, then you need a line. You don't see so you want to draw it because you can't see the top of the circle. Okay. So don't draw on anything there. Just erase that. I'm drawing nothing. If you, I can see the top of mine a little tiny bit. Okay. Um, let me ask you a question, Zoe. Okay, yeah. So are we drawing, when we're drawing this, mm -hmm. so now we have the shoulder circles, and I see that her um, dress has puffy sleeves. Mm -hmm. Are we drawing, are those little circles for the shoulders, are those the puffy sleeves? No, you have to draw puffy sleeves over those. Okay, so so that, so kids who are doing this for the first time mm -hmm. should know that we always draw the body underneath the clothes. Because if we don't do that, the clothes will never fit right. I know that seems really weird, and it seems like, a lot of work like why don't we just put the clothes on because then it never looks right okay so we always put the body the skeleton just like we first put the skull we're gonna do the same thing with the body so now we're gonna split in between this first head mark and this second head mark two-thirds of the way up so if half is right here we're gonna draw a line right here two-thirds of the way up from the bottom you mean mm -hmm. up from the, yeah exactly so that's half so, so if i mark half, half if i mark half then i'm gonna go that's a little too high Maybe too high little, okay little that, yeah all right so first i marked half right see i marked half here for myself because i'm not a good eyeballer and then i'm gonna go not too far up but a little up right like does that look right like that? That looks exactly right. Okay, so that's how I did it. So now we're gonna draw two big knee circles on top of that line there, and they're gonna to be touching the center line. Again, those, those are, are her knee bones. knee bones. Knee bones. So would you say they were like maybe a little bit larger than her eyes? Oh yeah, yeah, that's. Okay. On either side of that middle line. And they're kind of the same size and shape, right? That's always my hardest thing. I never get them quite the same size and shape, but I try. They don't have to be, nothing has to be exact. No humans are exact, we're not robots. Okay. So now you're going to come out from here slightly for her butt shape. And then you're gonna draw a diagonal line down. Go laugh. The back of the knee. I always laugh, it's funny. All right, so. So, all right, so a little bit. So it's just kind of a roundish, a little, bit. a little roundish thing, just a little. You're going to draw her skirt over it so you won't really see it. So right. if you're really dissatisfied with what you do, don't worry, you're not going to see it in the end anyway. Ooh. But that's how you know where the skirt's going to be. That looks pretty. Right. That's Ooh, pretty. Pretty. Yeah. That may be one of the best lines I ever drew. And then her, the inside of that leg is actually really just going to be the center line. And you're just going to kind of redefine it, going up a little past this mark, but definitely not all the way up to here. Otherwise, her legs would start at her belly button. Now, why do we care about her legs if we're not going to see them? Well, they're still there, and they affect the way her skirt falls. Okay. And also, here's another thing, is let's say you don't want to draw such a long skirt. Let's say you want to make her having a mini skirt or something, or draw her, draw her again with a totally different outfit. If you, now that you know how to draw her body, you can draw her wearing anything. So, you know. You want to draw your own fashion designs for her? That's true. You need to know how the body goes. Yeah. Okay. You can draw wearing pants. You can right. make her a boy. She can. <laughs> you can make it a boy. Get rid of the buns. It's a boy. <laughs> or it could be a boy with buns. Um, but yeah. So that's, yeah. Okay. That's 10 very good reasons right there. Okay. Always know where your body is. So now you're going to draw a curve on the outside. Not, not nearly as big. Just a very gentle curve on the outside for the other side of her leg. If you come if you come out too much, you'll look a little bit like the Venus of Willendorf, which is okay. Especially if you want to draw the Venus of Willendorf. Okay, I think I did good. You did great. It looks fantastic. I think I did good. I'm not really very good at bodies. It looks great. I kind of am really good at like well, I'm pretty good at heads. I think it looks great. But I'm not so patient, so bodies is always like. Mm. So the secret is before we go on. The secret mm -hmm. is if you want to be good at bodies. You have this video, you can repeat it a million times. As soon as you start to know how the body works, then you can always do it. And then you won't feel frustrated the way I do. So now you're gonna draw, coming off of this leg, you're gonna draw her 
the bottom of her front leg. So this is going to go past the center line a little bit diagonally all the way down to this mark at the bottom. So it's diagonal. Okay. Yes. So this is. So it's going to be diagonal a little bit, little bit. down mm -hmm. to there. You can see that. I just want to show you in the little mm -hmm. picture how right the legs are going diagonally. She's like. She's like flying like a fairy a or bit. something, yep, right? A little bit. I thought that would be cute. So now we're going to split this two thirds of the way down between this mark and this mark. Two thirds. So if half is here, hold on. If half is here, two thirds is here. Okay. And now. Never be shy about marking your halfway mm -hmm. if you need to figure out where your thirds are. You can mark anything you want that helps you. You're going to draw a little half heart shape coming up off of there for her foot. Eh, another really hard part are feet, right? So this is a good this thing. This is a pretty easy foot. This is a pretty easy foot, but the great thing is that you're gonna have this video again so that you can repeat this mm -hmm. anytime. And now you're gonna connect from the bottom of her leg to the foot. You're gonna come out a little and then come in a little. So you have her calf and her ankle. Oh, let me see that. That looks too complicated That's for me. You come out and you come in. It's just like the top part of the leg. You do exactly the same thing as you do with the top All part, but right. smaller. All right. Wait a minute. You come out a little. So I come out a little. Exactly the same way you did the hips. There and you then go. I perfect. Come in a little and then out a little. Perfect. Like that. You want to hold it up and show everyone? It's perfect. Is it really? Very perfect. Okay. So here I, I did it like that. It was kind of rough. I felt anxious. I did. I felt but anxious. But it looks great. Okay. Got it. And so now you're going to draw a straight line coming down in and connecting here. That's easy enough. Mm -hmm. I think I can, I think I can do the straight line thing. Mm -hmm. oh, shoot. Mm. <sighs> okay. So good to do. It's time to draw her arms. Um, so her first elbow is going to be, remember to make the elbow circles smaller than the shoulder circles, even though the same size or smaller. So her first elbow is going to be just a little bit above this line right here, and it's going to be out from the body a little bit. So it's going to be pretty small because that shoulder was already pretty small. And now this point right here, we're gonna make this longer. This right here, this mark, we're gonna make that longer. Hmm, let's see, which mark was that this one? one? That was the... Right here. That one that didn't yeah. have a line yet? This is just a little line, see this? Yeah, that didn't have a line, make that one. The longer. little line that didn't have a line. They okay, little that line that here, sorry. Little line that didn't have a line, there's that one. Make that one. That's yep. the one that we're gonna make long. Again, you're gonna make it very light because it's, we're gonna erase everything later. Okay. So a tiny little circle we're gonna draw, coming diagonally out from here. So it's almost like a straight line. You're gonna draw it above, with some space, above this line. And that's- So wait, that's way too close, too close. Up, too above, close, above. too close, too close, above, above. Okay, too close, too close. Because- if That's the wrist? Yes. You're gonna so it's draw, a little smaller, right? You're going to draw a little sock shape, I guess, coming out of the wrist, touching this bottom line. So you want to make sure you have enough space for that. A little sock shape? This is going to be your hands. She has a tiny little hands. Okay. That's very good, yep. And then... A sock shape. On well. the inside of her <laughs> hands, you can just draw a little line like that, and it'll look like a thumb. All you have to do is just draw a little line on the inside. Can I see that again? Right there. So that's on the inside. So I just kind of put like a little thumb scoop. Exactly. Yep. So now it's like a mitten sock. Yeah. Now it's a mitten. See that? Mm, going in really close for you. Okay. So now you're going to connect the outside of the shoulder to the outside of the elbow like this with the line, straight line. All right. Make it straight. It doesn't, don't go around the joints. Just go straight, connecting one to the other outsides. And then going to connect the inside of one to the inside of the other with a straight line, just straight. It's like connecting the dots. Keep them very straight. Okay. Now. Okay. Can I just tell them my favorite thing mm -hmm. about this? Hendo used to call this 
a carrot. Because it's a little wide, you know, carrots are like a little big on the top and a little skinny on the bottom. It's like the carrot. I like the way Zoe explained it though, that it just goes from the joint down to the bottom of the circle, from the joint down to the bottom of the circle. So now you're gonna do the bottom arm. The outside is the bottom part of the arm. From the outside of the elbow to the outside of the wrist, or actually it's the inside of the elbow to the inside of the wrist, I'm sorry. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the outside. Outside of the, outside of the elbow to the outside of the wrist, like so. Once again, another carrot shape. Okay, so now, it already looks so cute, don't you think? She's like, oh, I'm so cute. And we're going to draw on the shoulder line an elbow, and it's going to go, it's going to be just a little longer than the face. So the face ends here, you're going to put a little space, and then the elbow. Now you got to see that first. Okay. So here's the face. It ends here. And you can draw a little line. The face should be, you can draw a little line from where the face ends and then just farther than that, a little farther than that. So it's almost halfway in between. Okay, let me see again. See, this is almost so halfway in between. So here's the face, here. the little guideline I just drew for the face. Mm -hmm. And yeah, then so I'm basically drawing another circle. And, and it's kind of the same size as the shoulder? Kind of, yeah. Okay, how's that? Does that look good? That looks excellent. Here, here's my excellent circle. Remember that any guideline you draw is going to be erased, okay? So don't worry about it. Don't press. Oh, time for me to sharpen again. Zoe's got, where's your cute sharpener? Zoe's got this awesome little sharpener. It's called Uni Palette. It's a little Japanese sharpener. Again, I think this is maybe something that you can find online, maybe jet pens, wherever, but it's fantastic. One thing I find, and it's kind of weird, is that Japanese sharpeners are much better than any um, European or American sharpeners. This is true. I don't know why that is. And this is something that in Japan costs like a dollar. And it, it's really good because the Japanese are very neat. It also collects all your shavings. And um, and we also have here, can I, how do I open it, Zoe? Can you show us? I can open it and dump my shavings out into this fantastic origami box that we made. But if you tilt it like that, then everything's gonna fall out. Da -da 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 -da. Well, I will not tilt the origami box, but you can see we have two origami boxes. Which is three. Three origami boxes. Because we pulled it a whole bunch. Because we right? made them yesterday, and we're gonna put a video up for you, so if you wanna make your own origami box, you can. And of course, the other thing you can do is you can use a mechanical pencil and then you never have to sharpen. But these are actually great pencils. Um, I really love them. These are Tombow Mono 4B, right? 4B? 4B, 4B is a great, this is great because you don't have to press too Here, hard. You can take a look at that in case you're like a mom or a dad looking at this. Can you but see that? But any pencil that's 4B, any drawing pencil that's 4B is great because you don't have to press too hard and then you don't hurt your hands. Okay, so we're gonna draw the, the wrist circle. The wrist circle is gonna be right at the, it's gonna touch this eye line and be right straight above the elbow. So it should be close to the face like this. Okay, so it's going to do that, and it's going to be straight above, and it's a little smaller. Yes, this one's a little smaller. Okay. I'm going to sharpen my pencil, too, while we're here. Here, I'll show you my, my little Very circle. Good. Listen, my drawing is not going to be as good as Zoe's. You know that. It's all right. I'm not embarrassed, even though I'm old. I draw every day. I draw never day. I draw today with you. <laughs> so now we're going to draw a straight line touching the bottom of the shoulder circle and the bottom of the elbow like this. Straight horizontal line. Straight horizontal line. Oh, so then we're back to the carrot again. Mm -hmm. So then you're gonna draw a straight line that connects the top of the elbow to basically the chin because you can't see the top of the circle. But if you can see the top of the circle on yours somehow, then you can just connect it to the top. Cute, right? It's like a little tube. Then you're going to connect the outsides here, outside of this circle, outside of this circle. Very nice. Thank you. And then you're going to connect the insides, inside of this circle, inside of the wrist circle, inside of the elbow circle, like that. And then you're going to draw a little midden shape going over her hair, like that. Let me see that midden shape. Kind of like a leaf. 
So the mitten shape, like a leaf, goes over her hair and goes up. Goes up and out. So straight on the outside, up, curved on the inside. And out. Might be easier to start with the straight side first. So start by drawing the straight side diagonally. That kind of looks like she's saluting, which is cute too. All right. um, so this one, you won't see the, um, the, the thumb because it's turned like this. So if you want to draw... I guess my mitten doesn't look very good. My mitten looks oh, like a salute. No, oh, yours looks cute. It looks good. So then I drew just a little curve right here, like a little tiny bump right here to make it look like she has fingers. I'm not sure if you can see. I drew a little tiny bump at the top. Can you see that? Yeah, like a bump like that. Not, not quite. You don't want to draw it going in. See? I'm not sure if you can see. Here, it's easier to see on this one. See that right there? This little bump. Ah, uh, little see bump. That? Okay. It's not a line. It's just a bump. Because uh, bump. because a little line will make it look more like a thumb. And All your right. look like a thumb. Okay. I don't think that I'm going to be good at this particular oh, part of worry. it. So. You're doing great. Sorry, guys. Okay. We can't be perfect. So now let's draw her collar. So you're going to draw a little circle, a little semicircle curve, really, around the bottom of her neck. Okay, so now we're starting her clothes, Clothing right? Clothing time, yep. Clothing time. Um, okay, so a little neck. collar curve, or just a curve, curve around, around, around the, the bottom of her neck. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Very nice. And then you're going to draw two semicircles around that. So one goes up to the top of the neck and comes to the see. comes to the line comes in the middle, middle. and then goes all the way up. Low. Whoops, mine goes a little too big. Yours okay, is too low. Yeah. All right. Well, what can I tell you? Mine is going to be a little weird. It's a well. It's it not be so smaller. good. It should be flatter. Okay, mine it should, should be, be smaller and flatter. Here, you can see how mine is wrong, and now I'm going to erase it and try and make it right. And if you have it right, you can draw two little um, ribbons coming out like this. They're just two rectangles. It's still two. It's just keep it flat. Like here, you have it like this, like that. Keep it flat. Like Can a, you like, show that? Like a top lip shape. Like uh, so mine is too lip. round. Mm -hmm. Don't make it very round. All right, I'm starting again. You put the erasers in the middle, okay? Frustrated, frustrated. Okay, Choop. Very Choop. good. And then you're just going to draw those two little ribbons. Okay. And then two little ribbons, they're just like little rectangles? Yeah. Exactly. One rectangle and the one that's closer to us is a little fatter, right? Okay. No, that's just me drawing. Oh, mine are kind of long. They to, they're fine. They're great. They're not too long. Those are little. Don't little worry ones. about it. It's all right. Okay. So now you're going to draw a circle. She has a clock on her belt. So we're going to draw that. So it's going to touch the body right here. It's going to overlap this line. It's going to overlap this line even a little. Go slightly over this line and a little bit over this one. Can I see that from close up? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm starting here. I'm going here for the belt. I'm going mm -hmm. a little bit over line mm -hmm. two vertical. Mm -hmm. Coming down, coming down. Okay, I think I got it, right? Yeah, that looks pretty good, okay. Okay, and then coming out of it, we're going to draw two curves like this. So it's about. Inside the circle, you're going to draw another circle like this. Aha. Uh -huh. That kind of circle is called, oops, What's that a called? concentric circle. Circles, okay. right? It's a concentric circle. A good thing to know because it's an important term for life. Then you're going to draw a big black dot on the middle. Because it's a clock, so we're going to draw the clock hands now. Big black dot. Okay, big black dot. Big black dot. Big and black then dot. you're going to draw a big hand pointing up. It's just a like a flat oval, a long flat black oval. You can't pointing up. Okay. And then a little hand pointing down. So the little hand is going to be a small flat black oval like this. If you want to draw other kinds of hands, you can draw... Like with a little arrow kind of thing? Like this. You can draw an arrow like this. I'm That's a hand a you can draw. Arrow. Or draw hands. Here, I made arrows. Da -da 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 -da. You can draw it like this if you like. Like that. You can draw... Like this. 
even. Or you can just draw straight lines too. You can even just draw rectangles. There are a lot of different ways to draw hands on a clock. Okay. And then you can draw the 12 at the top, six at the bottom, three on the right, and the nine on the left, like this. Okay, so what am I doing? 12 on the top, six on the bottom. 12 three on the right, nine on the on left. The top, six on the bottom, three and nine. Okay, very nice. Okay. Now she has um, like um, straps, like um, like suspender type straps coming up from her clock belt. So I'm gonna draw one crossing over from this side of the clock up to her um, collar like that. Very good. It's basically gonna be straight. And you're going to draw another one crossing over from the other side of her clock upwards like this mm -hmm. up to her collar up to her oh, over her shoulder like that okay mm -hmm. all right and i have to do two mm -hmm. i have to make two like that whoa that's hard okay it's a little hard yeah I you have to draw the straps if you think it's too hard because it'll work just fine without the straps Instead so then, feeling adventurous, mm -hmm. you can do the straps. You can draw the bottom of her sleeve. It's like a cuff, really. Right here, so it goes up and up. Right here on the top of her arm. Okay. Mm so that is right outside the body. Here and here. Okay. And then you can draw the cuff of this sleeve going in and in like that. Cuff of this sleeve going in... So again, like backward C's. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you can draw a big semicircle coming over her shoulder to the cuff right here. That's her sleeve. That's the puffy sleeve, right? Uh-huh. Over her shoulder to the thing. Right over her shoulder mm -hmm. all the way down to the... Mm -hmm. Big semicircle. Mm -hmm. And then you can draw a little line overlapping her body on the inside. And what's that line for? That's her sleeve. Oh, I see. And then for her other sleeve, you can draw one line starting from the cuff going into her body and one line starting from her cuff going up and touching her face because it's behind her head. So this one is behind her head. Start from the cuff and go behind her head. Start from the cuff and touch her body. Okay, start from the... Touch her body. Okay. Excellent. Okay. That was tricky. Now, coming out from the clock, you're going to draw a gently rounded diagonal line coming down to this line right here. It's going to touch this line, that hand line. Coming out from the mm -hmm. clock, it's almost like a hmm. Like a swoop. Like okay. a swoop. Okay, how's that? Is that good? Like that? Very nice. Here's my swoop. Wait, here's one swoop for you. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side like this. Same thing on the other side like this. Okay, so the same thing on the other side. Wait mm -hmm. a minute. Let's see. Do I see that? Coming from the belt. going Coming over. from the belt and going, going behind over. her hand, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And swoop, whoops, swoop. And then very lightly you can connect the two lines with a curved line. This is gonna be a guideline. It's kind of like a big mouth. Mm -hmm. It does look like a big mouth, that's true. So we can go over her knees because, because it doesn't matter. Yep. Because right now it's just a guideline. All and right. so then, Let's see, right wait, over you think that guideline. Is good? Very good. Right over that guideline, you're going to draw a scallopy shape. So it's just going to scallop right over that guideline, touching that line, like so. So that's like a lot of U's, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of little U's or C's, like so, that? Is that good? 
That's very good. Okay, here, look at me, very good. Okay, so right at her, right in the bottom of her knees, you can draw a scal a little tiny scallopy line for the top of her socks, right at the bottom of the knee line. So you can use oh. the knee guideline as your guideline. Oh, so this is the opposite direction, though. Mm -hmm. I see that these are like little M's. They go up. Yeah, there's scallops going They're up. They're like little M, 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 little M, M, M. And then, ah, little M's like this. Wait, let me just show you. This way, right? The other scallops were that way. And now these little sock scallops are that way. M's. Now you can draw her glove scallops. So on this one, they're gonna be right at the bottom of her elbow joint coming up. On this one, they're gonna be right on the inside of her elbow joint coming up. So like that. scallops. For so the scallops on the hand, on the, the hand gloves. that's down the on the glove, is the, is the same M shape. Mm -hmm. M, M. And the one that's coming up, it's gonna be going this way. And so that's going to be like backwards threes, yeah. like three, mm -hmm. three, 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 right? Mm -hmm. uh, wait, no, how is a three? A three is that way, so it's like threes. Yeah, it's like threes. It's just like little threes. The one on the arm that's coming up is like this. The one on the arm that's coming up, you can barely see it. It's like little threes. It's like this. It's like three, 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 so three. So now, three. for her shoe, we're going to draw a little curve coming up, touching her foot, going from the back of the heel downwards. And the back of the heel, and oh, so it's another little scoop. We're in scoop mm -hmm. mode here. We're in scoop mode. And Although then, mine looks weird. That's all right. And then you can mine see looks a, like a little, bean. No, it should look like a bean. You can see a little bit of her other shoe right here. She's going to draw another scoop right there next to it. Let me see that other scoop. Okay. Basically, continuation. So they're kind of the same. Oh, I see. Oh, that's so weird. It does look like a kind of like a kidney bean, right? So now we're going to draw a couple creases. One, two, three, four curved lines coming out of her belt because her skirt is a little poofy, so there's some creases. So those creases there's are- two coming to this direction, two coming to that direction. Two coming this way, two coming that way. And they're not that long. And they're not very long, so mine was too long, so I'm gonna they make it shorter. No, that's not I'm wrong. I'm gonna make mine a little shorter. I guess your creases could be there's long no... and short. I noticed the creases sometimes have long and short. Yeah. But I can't see the creases, so move your hand away. Crease and... And now we're going to do one last hard crease thing. Crease and crease. Okay. We're going to do one last hard thing. We're going to draw three little creases coming out of the cuff part of each of her sleeves coming up like this. Can you see? Three little creases coming out of the cuff part. Coming out of the cuff part. So they're going up into her mm -hmm. arm, right? Yep, and then yeah. one, and then in the other side too? Yep. All right. Three little creases going up into the puff. Okay, mm -hmm. so they go one, two, three, four. And three. they change in direction. So yeah. they're like one, they can't see two, like that, you know? three. Wait, I'm gonna do it like that. And then I'll show you. Only three so they're like that. But you know what I'm saying is that some go in and some go out. Like they go, they're going around a circle. Okay. So um, the next thing to do is to ink it. Um, wow, we're up to inking. On. Okay, so I'm gonna ink it like this. And you don't have to use two pens. I recommend using a slightly thinner pen, like a Micron. I don't have um, like a 0.5 Micron. It's really good. I like this pen because it's a little thicker, easier to draw with for me. I'm gonna use this Sharpie, that way you can really see the lines. But for the small lines, I'm gonna use this one because I want it to look nice anyway. Okay, so, so the most important thing before Zoe starts is she's gonna take this very slowly for you because Remember, we drew a lot of bones and a lot of guidelines. And the last thing you want to do you is... You don't want to ink the guidelines. So right. like this circle, these straight lines, all of these. You don't want to ink these. So take it one step at a time with me, even if you think you know. We're going to start by inking the side of the face like that. And then this side of the face going up to the ear like that. Then you're going to ink the ear. Then ink the outside of the hair like this. 
if you're not, if it's not exactly on the lines, it's still okay. You're going to go much more slowly than Zoe because mm -hmm. she's really experienced. So then the outside of the hair on this side. And you can pause it, too, of course, um, if you need to. Then you're going to do the outside of the buns, like this. Do, 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 do. Outside of the buns. Then you're going to do the outside of this hand, like this. And then you're going to do the curves of the bangs. Curves of the bangs, and then the bottoms of the bangs. Like that. Then you do the eyebrows like this, and you're gonna do the nose. And now for these little face details, I'm gonna switch pens, otherwise it's gonna be icky looking. So um, I'm going to do the ear detail like that. I'm going to do the ribbon like this and the ribbon details like this. <laughs> now I'm going to do the, the mouth, the straight line on top and then the bottom part like this. There you go. And then I'm going to draw the circle for the eyes like this, there's a circle. Circle for the eyes like this, ta-da. Then the eyelashes, so I'm gonna start with the top one, starting with the top one like this. Then one, two, three, four on the sides, one, two, three, four on the sides, then the bottom ones, like that, bottom eyelashes. Then I'm going to draw the star on the inside star on the inside, star on the inside, and then I'm going to take my fat pen back. I'm going to color in this black part really carefully, really carefully coloring this black part in. Okay, then that's everything in the face. So. I'm gonna next go to the clothes. So we're gonna draw the outsides of the sleeves. Outsides of the sleeves. And the cuffs. Draw the cuffs. Like that. Then the shoulders and the neck. Neck and shoulders. And the outsides of the arms. That outside to the arms, you can see. Okay. And then this hand, the little thumb line, like that. So you see, he's always not drawing any of those circles in. Nope, no circles. Then the side of the body here, the side of the body here, down to the skirt, the outside circle. belt like so so now she's doing the thick lines right the little lines are gonna have to be done with a thinner pen yep the outside of the skirt then I'm gonna do the bottom of the skirt there's the scallops there we go. right and so you see that whole body inside where you see where we did her legs and we said that's how her skirt hangs we don't draw that and the inside of the legs like so. You ink only the part that you would actually see from mm -hmm. the outside. Outside of the leg, outside of the leg. The shoe shape. Now I'm gonna go in and do some details. So, taking back my so thinner pen. This is a thin pen, so can we just talk about this pen for one second in this case- This pen, unfortunately, you can't get here. It's I think you can maybe be able to get it through oh, jet pen. I don't, think so. I don't think so, but if you can, it's great. This is um, a Sailor brush pen, extra fine. Um, it really isn't a brush. It's kind of brush-esque, but it's not really a brush. It's thicker though than, than a regular pen, which is great for um, great for doing stuff like this. It's not waterproof though. 
but I love it. I love sketching with this pen. But most of the pens that you do want to draw with are going to be these waterproof ones. Are Microns waterproof. are great. Microns work really well. Microns, great. Sharpies, extra fine Sharpies. Why? Because if you wanted to do watercolor mm -hmm. or marker. Uh -huh, marker, yeah. You don't want when with you markers, put a color. There's actually a great trick for marker that will be hard to do during the quarantine. But if you go to your like a photocopy place like Staples and you print out your drawing, you can draw over it with marker. You can color over it with marker on the photocopy without smudging anything. So that's, but you can make a photocopy on your um, on your printer. It doesn't work as well on the printer. Sometimes oh. it smudges. It depends on your printer. Some of them it's fine. Some of them it's not. So what I did was I um, I drew these little creases here, these little creases here. I drew the scallops right here, the scallops right here. Now I'm going to draw the collar, going around, collar, collar. Then the ribbons there. Then I'm going to draw these lines like this, the um, the straps. Where the straps are going to go behind mm -hmm. something, you don't draw mm -hmm. over the other strap, right? Then I draw the little circle here for the clock. I draw the clock hands. I draw the clock numbers, 12, 3, 6, 9. Then I draw these creases, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then I draw these sock scallops like this, and that is everything. So once you're done with this, would you mind making sure this is held down really well? Mm -hmm. Okay. Held down meaning? Just make sure this doesn't shake. Okay. I'm because hold this the... is probably going to shake a little because the table's a little shaky. I'm holding the camera. Then I erase all of the guidelines. So if you're a not very big kid and you're weak and bored by now, you can always ask your grown up to help you and do the erasing. I've been or Zoe's friend. I hate friend. erasing. I've been Zoe's erasing pal for years. Notice she's doing it herself now, but I hate erasing though. And honestly, I was about to ask her if she would do it because I'm very lazy and it hurts my hands and I don't like erasing at all. But when you one of the really most important things is how you scrub all those pencil lines out because that's what makes it look really professional. Yeah, you can't get lazy here, otherwise it, your drawing won't look as nice as it really is. So as you erase, make sure to check all of your lines and make sure that you haven't accidentally forgotten something important. So Can if you show if us how we're going to scoop those into our little box too? Huh? How we're going to... Oh! Oh! So you scoop... have these eraser shavings, right? And you folded this box. This is the good thing about the box. You, you may not box. have folded your box yet. If you yet. have folded your box, you can just dump all the eraser shavings into the box. That way you keep your house nice and clean. Makes it easier to clean up. Very Japanese. Uh-huh. Nobody would throw their shavings on the floor in Japan. No. God forbid. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Is it really scooped up and clean? Let's let's see. It's, you know, it's just, this is as much as I'm going to get off with my limited abilities erasing. And I pressed maybe a little too hard sometimes. And so now... You have... Ta-da! A drawing and you can color it. And it looks pretty much like... Like this one. Yeah, right? let's put that one. Let's slide it all the way under so that they can look at the coloring. Now, of course, the coloring is completely up to you. You don't have to color it like this at all. This was done with colored pencil. I did with colored pencil. I wanted to do with marker, but because I can't go out to the copy shop, I couldn't print it. And I didn't want to smudge my lines. So, um, this is actually very simple. I, um... The easiest part of this is, I know the face looks kind of complicated, but actually all I did was I took one pink pencil and I just colored around the cheeks, colored around the upper eyelids, and that's all I did for the face. You can do it any way you want, but that works well. I just drew around the lips for the lipstick. The bottom part of the eye I colored in. You can you, make anything any color you want. And you could do a background too. And you can do a background too. You could too. fill it in. You could cut it out. For you example. Can, you know, you could do a million things to it. I draw yeah. flowers. Flowers, butterflies, all kinds of stuff, butterflies. right? Butterflies. Or dogs or cats or, you know, a house or a garden or anything. Butterfly. Right? You can have anything your little heart desires. So that'll be really be your drawing. And if you like, mm -hmm. you can post your drawing. Oh, yeah. You can post your drawing to the, to the page. Yeah. This, can we post on YouTube? I'm not sure. I don't know, but you could tweet it at us. You could tweet it at or us you could or Instagram, Instagram it, at, it us. at us. Tag. Um, why don't you tag? Well, what should they tag? Let's think. I don't know. 
no tag uh, at um what is it at time and kids yeah tag at time, time and kids. kids um and it's the same on twitter and on instagram so that would be awesome same on twitter and instagram same on instagram at time or, and kids. or you can email to me at director um director at time in kids dot org and then we can post some of your pictures and um and you can tweet out to people and let them know that we're working to raise money for time in and to keep all kids on the planet drawing, learning about opera, and having fun. We can't wait to hear from you. So I think that's it. I think we are... Let me um, finish my cat. Uh-oh. A cat is coming. After the cat, Zoe and I will be leaving you. And... Um, Black cat lying down. And we'll talk to you soon. There are more pictures, more drawings to come. Check out the video for box folding. That will be coming. It's a flat cat. Um, I think that's it. We're almost done. We're almost done. Da -da 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 -da. There you go. Okay. This is my See you later. Bye. <laughs>